I'm going to point the camera up. I apologize. Um, now. <laughs> okay, do you see me? All right. All right, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to make Christmas ornaments using a little bit of clay and our Bloom Girl stamps. It doesn't matter which ones you have. You can use any of these because really what we're doing is focusing on the faces. You can see you can use the large or the small, which I did. For the class or the workshop tonight, uh, my samples that I have ready and prepped will be the uh, Gardenia and then Sophie. Uh, stamps so you can see both sizes will work for this project and I, I wanted to emphasize the, um, one thing some people I've heard love the larger ones and some people feel a little intimidated by them so before we get started I want to go a little over these a uh, little bit so the larger sizes I did go larger in size because I found that the ones that wanted to do the mixed media and the home decor and the do-it-yourself projects felt that the first release were a little bit too small and our embellishments on the stamps were a little tedious at the size that they uh, were. So I went ahead and made them the larger size so that more people uh, were able to use them and they were a little uh, easier to use. Like the fussy cutters out there that like to use the elements from the stamps found it a lot easier to use the larger stamps. Also, when I designed the stamp set, I still kept in mind that I wanted the focal point of the larger stamps to still fit on a card or tag. So that's what I did when I went ahead and I was drawing these out. I made sure that the focal point, like her face and her hair, or her face and her flower, would still fit onto a card easily. So just keep that in mind. If you haven't gotten the larger ones yet, they're still a, a great size to use on your cards. Once you have it actually on a card or tag, let me grab one in case you didn't see them the last time. This is one of uh, Julie Nutting's cards and you can see these are a little bigger than a standard card but still even if you cut the card down her face fits onto it. So once you have it onto a piece of paper you could see how less intimidating or intimidating it could be because I mean look at even though the stamp so is a larger size it's still usable on her cards and her tags plus you can use them on so many other different things and I'll have a lot of fun outside of the box ideas um, with the new stamps coming out on our uh, months to come for Live with Prima so make sure you check in on those each month because I'm going to have different ideas to utilize your, all of your stamps, all of your Bloom Girl stamps, no matter which ones you have. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, these are the ones that I've already baked in the oven. You don't have to use uh, polymer clay. You could use paper clay or air dry clay. Just remember that it does take more time to dry. These we could force them to dry by putting them in the toaster oven or regular oven. Now I am using the uh, Super Sculpey, I had this on hand because of my art dolls, which I'm starting one. <laughs> you can see the ugly phase of one. This is kind of the beginning of one. <laughs> Tin foil and clay, baby. Um, so I had it on hand. You can get whatever you want. Uh, Crayola's air dry clay would work perfectly fine for these and still be strong enough to last over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how I form them out. This is a little dry, so it's kind of hard. You want to knead it. If you uh, find that it's a little bit hard to, it's not quite as pliable as you'd like, you could go ahead and kind of um, put it in a warm spot, put it under a lamp or something. It'll soften it up as well a little bit. You don't want to leave it there too long because it'll, of course, start setting it. It'll do the opposite and it'll start um, baking it into place. So what I'm going to do, I kind of kneaded this already. Um, you're also going to want, you could use cookie cutters, you could use anything that has some type of shape. I'm just using this jar. I'm going to press into my clay once I'm done. I don't have any cookie cutters because I don't make a lot of cookies. <laughs> so I'm just going to use what I have on hand. I am going to need to stand up to put a little bit of pressure on this to get it started. 
because we're not putting a lot of shape and form to it, you don't have to worry too much about air bubbles. If you have a huge one in there, say you get one in the center, you're using the air dry clay, you won't come across that as much as you would with the polymer, just because the way that the uh, compound of mediums uh, blend or uh, smooth out a little easier, compress a little easier. But say you do have an air bubble that you could see, you just come in and kind of poke it and then rub down. You could have one right here and I can just rub that uh, bubble out of the medium or of our clay. I'm going to take my brayer. You also take a, uh, not a clothes pin, a rolling pin. Press it out. You just need it just large enough to press your uh, template out in or your cookie cutter in. And it doesn't matter. You can see on mine, you've got like little, my mat's not the cleanest. So I have some stuff picking up off to, off of my mat. It's okay because we're going to cover it in gesso and other mediums. So you won't even notice once we're done. So I'm just going to press down just to, this is pretty thick. It's about a quarter of an inch. I'd say I wouldn't go any thicker than that or thinner. Keep it around a quarter of an inch. If you have some that won't pull up, see we have this edge that's, that needs to be cleaned a little bit around the edge. You could take an exacto knife, make sure you have a cut mat underneath, or you could just take a little needle edge, which that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this needle edge and I'm just going to run it right along the side of our piece. I'm not pushing too hard. I don't want it to go through my mat, of course. But I'm just running that right along the side to clean up my edge. Let me see. We already make sure you save all this. It's still workable. You can put it in a plastic bag, it'll say for a few weeks. Past that, it starts getting a little hard to manage um, with the polymer. The air dry, as soon as you open that up to the air, it's going to start setting. So if you do have air dry, unused air dry clay, make sure you put it in a really, uh, I put, I double package my air dry when I have it on hand. I put it in a plastic baggie, then I put it in like a Ziploc container. So you want to press all of the air you possibly can out of the Ziploc bag and then put it in a um, container because you want to make sure you get all of that air out of your clay or it'll start setting on you. Okay, so we have our round little piece. Okay. Does anybody have questions? Okay. Okay, so we have our circle. I was just making sure that we didn't have any questions. We have our circle cut out. Then you could take your uh, uh, stamp. You just put that over wherever. You kind of want to make sure that you have the, the space or the uh, piece of the stamp that you want to use. I kind of lightly press it in. And then I take my brayer over the top. I start from one end and I go all the way across and I continue my motion. If you don't, what will happen is you can kind of get a double print in there if you don't press hard enough. So you can see here we just used our stamp and our brayer tool. Come on. Don't get finicky on me now, huh? All right, easy peasy. And then what I do is I take my little needle tool or you take a bray, uh, what is it called? Any type of sharp implement and tool to make the hole. Now remember, you want to make it a little bit bigger. If you want to exaggerate that hole just a little bit, because no matter what clay you use, you're gonna have some type of shrinkage to it. So you want to make sure that you have an adequate amount of space to put yarn or whatever you want to hang your ornament from. Okay. <laughs> this is for a molding clay. 
This is a clay molding tool. It has a little spatula on one end, a spade on one end, and then it has the needle on the other. They are pretty sharp. You could also use a, um, what is it called, embossing tool, one of those little embossing tools that has a more blunt edge if you want, if you feel more safe using it. So what you're going to do is, if you have the air dry, you're going to set that aside about 24 hours. It takes a full two days, but you can start working with it after 24 hours, depending on what your climate is like. It, some will take longer, more than others. I'm going to move this out of the way. And if you're using the polymer clay, read the side of your box. Most say 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. They say 15 minutes for every quarter inch. So if you have, say, a half an inch of clay, you'd want to put it in around a half an hour. A quarter inch would be 15 minutes. I usually put it in, if you're using a toaster oven, which that's what I often use, so I'm not heating the whole entire house, making um, a piece and contaminating what I usually cook in. Um, I put it in, I heat the toaster oven for a couple minutes so it gets warmed up evenly inside and then I put it in for my 15 minutes. I sometimes bump it up to about 17 just because the temperature, some, if you don't have a real expensive toaster oven, can fluctuate and um, mess it up. If you have one of those a oven um, thermos or thermometers, the oven ones that you put on the sh uh, shelf in the oven, I suggest those as well. Kind of uh, keep, you can keep an eye on what the temperature is, which is really nice. But you put those in. Once they're done, let them cool inside the oven because they can be very hot and they're still pliable. If once they're cooled, they'll they'll harden and you have your finished piece. All right. So I'm gonna put that in the oven later on, along with my weird looking doll. But what you'll have is you'll come out with uh, your finished, you could hear that they're finished. This one still had ink. I still had ink in her on her stamp, but it kind of helps you guys see where I stamped her. And you could do that as well. If you have white clay, you could stamp your uh, stamp with ink and then press her in and be done with it and walk away. Or you can continue on to the steps we're going to go over right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of our heavy white gesso. And the reason why I'm using the heavy white is because it does give a little bit of more uh, texture with the technique we're going to be doing. So I'm going to take a, just a regular brush. Let's get our water in, Oop, our water into arm's reach. I'm just going to grab, let's grab one that's hopefully clean because if you guys have taken a workshop from me, you know. My stuff's not always the cleanest. Let's check that brush out. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to take our paint, our gesso. You want to make sure your paintbrush is dry. Mine wasn't, but that's okay. We're going to do two coats. If you have white clay, of course, you won't need as, uh, the second coat. reason why I'm adding the second coat on here is because I am going over a flesh tone uh, flesh tone clay, so it's going to take a little bit more to cover. You want to make sure you get into all those little grooves of our stamped image. Yes, this is the new Art Basics Heavy Gesso in white. There's also black and clear available as well. Now it looks kind of streaky and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And actually I just need, I'm going to just do the one coat for this one. This one I'm going to add two because I'm going to go lighter in color on that one. This one we're going to do dark like the original samples that you saw on the group page and on Facebook. Paint around the edges just so we have it finished. You can paint the back if you want. You have a tree that's going to be visible from all sides. For the class, I'm just going to paint the one side so we have a little less dry time. Okay, let's 
go ahead while this one's still wet I'm gonna go ahead and take my brayer and I'm just gonna brayer cross her and the reason why I'm doing that is uh, you know what I'm gonna add another because it's picking up some quite a bit of our gesso I'm gonna do a second layer to, to show you guys um, let's dry this let's go do both we'll do both dry and then add our second layer and use the brayer because what it's gonna do is it's gonna create this texture so that our uh, sprays, when we spray on top of it, collects in those little crevices and texture of our gesso base. And that kind of gives it that vintage look. Oh, my ink from my stamp is coming through. That's okay, we'll fix it. We're gonna make this one kind of light and it's gonna be blue and snowy feeling pretty and happy and all that. Okay. You don't need this first coat too heavy just because you don't want to cool, you don't want to fill all of those crevices with your gesso. You want to leave room in there so that our sprays later on can do their job. Okay, so let's heat set this. Okay, you want to make sure it's, they're pretty dry because if they're not completely dry, what will happen is when you go to over back over it with your second coat of gesso, it will just pull up some of the gesso from the first layer. Okay, so again, we're going to go over it with a second coat. Now, even if you're using white clay, I would still do a coat of gesso just so you have a nice even um, layer, a base to work off of. And this is priming your surface so that your sprays will stick to the surface a little bit easier. Okay. I'm just going to lightly roll it over the top. And you'll notice it's hard to see in the video, but it gives it this uh, cool weathered look. I don't think we'll be able to get it to, it's hard to see in the video, but it gives it this cool weathered look when you run the brayer over the top of it. Paint our other girl. And again, I don't want all of the little crevices completely filled with the gesso. So I'm kind of going in and pulling some of the excess out. You'll lose some of her definition if you don't. And then we're going to dry them one more time. And we'll start having a little bit of fun with our uh, sprays. Okay. Put our gesso away.
because Jess was a primer, it dries fairly quickly. I'm going to grab a towel. I like spraying on top of a towel because it kind of keeps down the mess. I have a, quite a collection that I keep handy um, so that I don't waste a lot of paper towels. I have a basket of just old dish towels that I, I can grab a bundle of them at the dollar store and just wash them once they're kind of met their limit. I just throw them in with the, uh, dirty towels or sheets or something like that. So now that we have this, we're going to do a couple layers of sprays because we want to build up that color onto our base. Now these are the Color Bloom sprays. Many of you have seen them or hopefully used them by now. Um, Prima came out with these last January. And they're a nice shimmered spray. This one is worn leather. They come in a variety of colors. They have a trigger handle, which is really nice. The old pump handles on a lot of the sprays um, just got too much to use, especially when you're trying to move all of that mica and glimmer and um, shine through the, the misters, they often clogged. So Prima came out with the trigger handle. They're the first ones on the market who did that prevented that um, flow from, from clogging. So um, when you get the bottles, let me show you a new one so you can see how they come to you at the store. <clears throat> they come just like this so that you don't have to worry about them spilling and everything else. There's a little seal inside. Once you get them, you're going to want to uh, pull the lid off, take the seal inside, shake it really well before you open it, and then you're going to put your toggle in. Now, if there's a little blue stopper. One, take that out. I even made this mistake because I was wondering why I wouldn't spray. And then you want to make sure when you're priming for the first couple of times, you want to make sure that you, you pull the trigger back really slowly so that you can get the, because this is such a large sprayer, you want to make sure that you get the spray in in one f uh, full uh, motion. Now, just like say you are running low on any type of spray like Windex or anything like that, what happens is if it gets air caught in there, which it does when you first start, it'll um, take a little bit of time to get that reprimed. So you want to make sure you shake it up really well, get that mica moving. Now I can go almost two full, two to three full bottles, depending on the color. The darker ones you can get more out of. This one, once I get about halfway down, I fill it back up with just plain water. And then again, once I get halfway down, I fill it back up. The darker ones you could probably do a third time that way. The lighter ones you lose a lot of the color, but you'll still have that shimmer uh, finish to your pieces. So make sure you use everything up you can. And then save the bottles. You can always use the bottles for other um, mediums because believe me, the bottles alone are so worth it. So you're going to go ahead and spray. I'm just spraying over the top of this. Nice even coat. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat set it this way. You can see you can't see a lot of her features right now because the spray is sitting on top. And we're going to push some of that spray away from her face. The first coat does kind of push a lot of that off. Okay, you could leave her just like this. You can see kind of the white speckles in her face. Come on, focus, focus. Why won't you focus? You can see the white speckles in her face. That's one reason why I'll layer another color on top. I'm going to add a little bit of one of my favorite colors, gold foil. Okay. Got a little bit of our more of our warm leather. I'm gonna heat set it again. And because we're working on a non-porous, gesso does have some type of porous uh, surface to it, but you're taking a lot of the porous surface out as if you would 
um, it's different than if you were working on a piece of paper or chipboard or something like that. You're not, you don't have that surface to kind of Im immediately suck up that mist. So you kind of have to work it into your surface. And it's cool because you create these cool little veins and stuff into the piece. Make it really vintage looking. This almost looks like a starry night to me, which I may play off of. And I'll show you this little trick or this little technique using a white paint pen. Hopefully I have one handy where I'm at. If not, I can find something. So I'm just heat setting this. And you can see we added another layer to it. She's not completely dry. There's still spots that are dry. You want to make sure they're completely dry though, because if it's not, what will happen is you'll pull some of the gesso up with it if you touch it, like I just did to show you. So you can add different layers of color on top of this. I think I'm going to leave her the way she is. Let her sit and dry. Now I'm going to do my lighter um, wintry uh, finished one. Fold that over. Now the colors again that I used on that one were worn leather and gold foil. Okay. And now the next one we're going to do, that one's not the cook baked one. Oh, here she is. Sitting right in my face. I'm going to combine a couple colors. I'm going to do glistening waves. And I think I may add some summer sky or um, soft teal. Soft teal and glistening waves are very close together in color. One's just a tad bit more opaque. It has a more opaque finish than the other. And I'm going to use... Just spray that around. Now, I will tell you this. These sprays uh, have been sitting on my desk for at least a month since I've gotten a chance to use them last. And I just immediately sprayed it. So another thing I had a problem with with other sprays is if I let them sit for a while, when I went to go use them, they wouldn't spray. I'd have a hard time getting them started again. So that's another plus to these sprays is, I mean, they immediately start working. So I have my first layer on there. I'm going to go ahead and heat set it. Here's another look for those of you who kind of prefer a lighter color. A lighter color project. Now you don't want to heat it too close because what you'll do is you'll push, see all that spray that's in the crevices that kind of make her highlight? You'll push those out of the way. You'll push them out of the crevices. So you just want to do kind of a surface dry. Let it dry completely on its own. Okay. I kind of like the teal more. So I'm going to add more to that. Dab a little bit off the edge. Okay. I got her primarily dry. Let's hold her up. <clears throat> I'm going to put her aside while we finish the next one. You can see how the nice shiny finish. You can see the details of the stamps. It's really pretty. So we're going to put her aside. She can dry on her own a little bit. Now we're going to come in and add a little bit of accents to this one. What I'm going to take is I'm going to take a little bit of the regular, the matte, soft matte gel. Any type of uh, gel medium will work for this technique. I want to add some three-dimensional elements to her around the frame of her face, like right around the edge of the stamp or our ornament, I should say. 
And to do that, I'm going to take some of our mica flakes. This is gold leaf. I'm also going to take a little bit of the glass glitter and gold rush. And let's see, and some glass beads. I'm going to do the clear glass beads for this one. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my finger. If you don't like finger using your hands, it's getting messy. You can take a brush, of course. I'm just going to dab a little bit around the edge. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want to smear it because what you'll do is you'll reactivate that spray that's not quite finished. I will say, and I've tried, and we've talked about this at my class over the weekend, my workshops over the weekend. Now, some of the sprays will re, because they're water soluble, they will reactivate once they're wet. If you um, completely dry this and let it sit, it would be a lot harder to move around that spray once it's completely dry. If you spray it in an art journal and you heat set it, I've taken a water brush straight to the medium and it doesn't reactivate very easily. Once it's done, it's done. I know some other sprays that I've used, once you, even if you let it sit there for a week and you go and drop the water on it, it's going to reactivate and you'll have water spots. So that's just um, another tip with using the uh, sprays. I'm going to take some of my mica flakes. I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit on. I don't want a whole lot. I don't want it to overpower the piece. And this is just our first layer, so keep that in mind. Okay. Again, I'm going to come in with a little bit of our gel medium. Now I'm using the mat. It will take away some of that luster that might be in some of the elements, like the glitter. If you want to keep that shiny finish, go ahead and use the gloss. And again, this is a part of the Art Basics line. You can see our first layer here. All right. And now we can come in with our glitter. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit through the piece. Kind of press it down into our medium. And later, once it's dry, all the excess will fall off. Just press it down into the medium. Okay. And that just adds a different facet. Put the lids on before I spill it across my desk, which would not be the first time. Now for the beads, because they're a little heavier um, medium, they're a little heavier base than our mica flakes and our glitter. What I would do is I would take a little palette knife or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can even just pour what I actually would do first. Don't pour them out on your table because what they do is just run across your table. And then you have to go chasing after them. Put a little puddle, depending on how much you plan on using of the beads. Just put a little dollop of your gel medium onto your work mat and then pour the beads on top of that gel. And what I'm going to do is kind of blend my beads in with the gel medium because once they're completely coated, now with the, these, because they are, um, they have a shiny finish, I would probably use the gloss gel, but this is fine. And then I'm just going to pull these up and add them to my piece. And because I pretty much put an adhesive on them, they'll stay in place once they're dry. Okay, because the gel medium does act as an adhesive. All right, so we have our medium and our little pieces. Once this is completely dry, everything will dry clear. So those little white spots won't be white. They will be clear once they're finished. Come on, focus. Don't know why it doesn't want to focus on my ornament. There we go. See? 
<laughs> those who don't like getting dirty. Are you having a little issue? Now I won't lie, I don't mind my hands being dirty, but once it gets under my fingernails, holy cow, it's like, oh, I can't get to a sink fast enough. As long as it's just on my hands, I'm good, as long as it doesn't go under the nails. All right, so let's check on our little blue girl. We're gonna set our brown, the um, gold and leather one aside. This is the gel lid. And I'm gonna dry her one more time and we'll add her little elements to her. She's pretty close to being dry. Now, depending on what your weather is like, with the sprays, since we're heat setting them and we're at we're building layers, you may notice for about a day and maybe a tad bit tacky. This one right here is perfectly fine, but my first set, because it was wet outside when I did them, they were a little tacky to, to touch, but once um, they completely set, they were fine. It may just take a little longer. So this one is actually good right now. It's really dry. Well, we we're supposed to have rain actually tomorrow for sunny California. It's kind of nice. We need it. All right. So I'm going to go more for the cool colors. So for this one, I'm going to use the Mica Flakes and Frosted. I'm going to use the Glass Glitter and Platinum. And then I'll ask, add more of our glass beads and crystal. Okay, so again, hey, okay, I'll even do all of you a favor. I'm going to grab a paintbrush. Okay, take a paintbrush, we're going to dab it around the edge with our gel medium. I'm just going around the edge, the outer edge. I don't want to overpower her, like I said before. And we're just going to take our frosted flakes <laughs> around the edge. Kind of press those into the medium. I'm going to add another layer on top just to help them kind of secure them in place. Again, if you want that nice pretty shimmer to stay on your accents, your, your ingredients, use the gloss. I kind of want that aged look to mine so that frosted matte finish is fine with me. So now we have the second layer of our medium. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit of our glass glitter. Around the edge. Okay. Press that in. Alrighty. So we have our two layers, and now we're going to do our little blend of gel and seed beads, or glass beads. A little bit of gel. And if you don't, if you just pour them out onto your table, you're going to be chasing them like burning cats, I swear. They go everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to layer that on there. Our little snow princess. You can make these any color you like. You don't have to stick to the colors I chose. My tree is usually more of the rustic looking. It's kind of why I went for the dark. A lot of you said they look like cookies. 
I wish they were cookies right about now, but instead I'm eating uh, chicken, brown rice, and asparagus. No cookies here. All right, so those ah, are done. I'm going to put that back aside, and we're going to prep a couple of our resin elements from Ingvild's collection. I don't have the item number on hand. I tossed the packaging, but it is in the list of products used in the description. If you, if you need to know, let me know. Um, let's see. I, for, okay, for cleaning your brushes, I see there's a little thing going on. Cleaning your brushes, what I usually use, I'll keep them in water until I'm ready to wash them. But then I also use, Dawn does work well. You do have to make sure that you rinse that out completely, though, because if you don't, what it can do is um, mix with your other mediums. If you don't get the Dawn soap out of the bristles or any type of soap cleaning agent, what it could do is combine with whatever medium or paint you go to use after later on. So just keep that in mind. I use uh, the Masters Brush Cleaner. This is, um, it helps preserve the bristles as well, especially those of you who use natural bristled brushes. Just, uh, you kind of, you get this wet, rub your brush in it, and then it'll wash it out. I also use it to wash my hands. They have soap, a bar um, version as well. So this is a nice one to clean your brushes. But you can use Dawn, just make sure you completely rinse them out, all right? Because Dawn breaks down oils and um, elements. They, it breaks down the mediums you're trying to paint with later on, okay? So, yes, I love this stuff. The brush cleaner works awesome. Bye, Courtney. I didn't even see you there. Okay, so what we're going to do, same thing, we're going to build color onto our elements. I'm going to do one in the gold. Let's see. I don't want to overpower these. These are kind of larger in size. We'll do this one in the gold and this one in the blue. I'm just going to take my gold foil for this one. I really like this color. Spray it straight on and then heat set it. You can find this at many of your craft stores, arts and crafts. If they have a fine arts area with paints and brushes, it's usually in that area with the mediums, the art mediums. Definitely can find it in Michael's Hobby Lobby. You can even find it online. Okay, so look how quick and easy that was just to add a nice coat of color to our piece. Once she's completely dry, I would go ahead and I'm going to glue her on here. Now, you can, of course, add flowers. You can add all of the little embellishments you want. You can add say it in crystals when she's dry. I'll go in and add a few here. Let's go ahead and color our other piece. I'm going to do this one in the teal. Oops. Yeah, we'll do that one in, let's do soft teal. Let's check that one out. I think it's going to be too light, probably. I didn't shake it well enough. Nothing's coming out. This is a new bottle. Hold on, guys. I just got this one together before we started. There we go. Very light in color. I hadn't tried it out yet, so I had to tonight for you guys. It's a very soft pastel color. It's nice, just a nice shabby finish to it.
and I can add that right there once it's all dry. Now, I, you can help this along. You can heat set it. Again, it wouldn't dry completely clear until probably tomorrow, even if you tried to heat set the glass beads. The medium does take time on its own to dry. And then let's go ahead and add these. I have these sand and crystals that match pretty well to this piece. So I'm going to add those. Actually, not. I'm not going to do that color. The sand and crystals package I have right here is 551445. Now stamps, the stamp I used is Gardenia on this one and Sophie on this one. Just so you all know which ones I used. I'm going to just add little crystals. Oop, I didn't glue her on because my mediums aren't dry yet. And I'll add one over here probably once everything's dry. But you get the idea. Yeah? I know, huh? So pretty, pretty, pretty. We have um, some time left, actually, tonight. These went by a little faster than we thought, huh? Do you have any questions on the stamps or the stencils or the mediums we used this evening? I wish I had the other ones to show you the finished pieces, but I don't. I think I packaged them up already for presents. I can't even remember my brain half the time lately. It's getting so close. In two weeks, you guys, after Thanksgiving, we're going to start previewing all the sneak peeks. So make sure you have Prima liked on Facebook and the Bloom Girls Creative Group. If you guys, I have a group, if you aren't um, there already, we have a group on Facebook all about the Bloom Girls. And it doesn't even have to be Bloom Girls. It's just women and girls or men, it doesn't matter who you are, who enjoy um, using the stamps, creating your own artwork, you draw your own faces, whatever. We, we encourage all artwork there. But we really like to um, emphasize the Bloom Girls and what is behind them and everything else and just have fun and encourage others no drama there as soon as I see any I get rid of them um, too many problems but make sure you check that page out if you don't like uh, live with Prima already on Facebook make sure you follow us on live with Prima uh, Carrie is awesome she's um, the one that carries us all along in Live with Prima and she always posts all the new projects coming up and everything else and people share their artwork uh, with using Prima product there as well so make sure to check us out there um, let's see I need Paula if you are friends with me on Facebook let me know and I can add you um, to the group if you need to, either one, if you're not in either one of them. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you guys Tuesday. Next Thursday, of course, is Thanksgiving, so there will not be a show next Thursday. We don't have a lot of, uh, well, we do have a few local scrapbook stores here, but it's dwindling down, sadly. I think that's kind of the trend that's going everywhere. But we really need to support our local scrapbook stores. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Now, I show you guys something that uh, will be up on the blog tomorrow. But here is a card I created using the um, Free Spirit stamp. Show you that. Done with watercolors. The same gold flake. Um, mica flakes that I used tonight and a few little elements I stamped on a piece of linen and then I pulled the piece apart oh and also in the original I wanted to show you guys in the original that you saw a bunch of threads coming out what I do is I'll take a piece of canvas or linen uh, canvas has a little bit thicker uh, thread to it and I just save a, my scraps like this I won't probably use this for anything and I'll just pull the threads off of this piece 
And then I'll collect them. And before I glue my little filigree piece down, I'll glue these underneath it. And you can use thread as well, of course. But I kind of like to repurpose and give my elements or what I have laying around some use. And I'll glue that underneath just to add another texture to it. Okay. Well, have a good night, good day, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time. Also, let me just check, make sure there's nothing else before we go. Okay, looks like we're good. If you guys um, have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me on Facebook. Contact me. And we'll see you next Tuesday, Tuesday after, Tuesday morning. Night, everybody.